Daniel Larson, a homeless man who roams the streets of Denver, Colorado. He believes that he is destined to marry America's Got Talent winner Grace Vanderwall. He believes he is a famous singer. In reality, it is all a lie. Cleverly set up by trolls, Daniel lives each day believing that he is famous and inches away from meeting Grace. Welcome to Daniel's Denial, a documentary series covering the life and times of Daniel Larson. After the like e meltdown, all hell broke loose for Daniel. Trolls were more persistent than before, the delusions ramped up, and he was headed overall downhill. On the 4th of July, 2021, Daniel was told by trolls that Grace was in critical condition in the hospital and probably about to die. We can see him pray to God to save Grace from dying before trolls decided it was time to tell him that Grace had passed on. Daniel made a video wishing for Grace to rest in peace. Believing that Grace was dead, Daniel made a shocking and vile confession. He gives a full testament to being a pet and says that he sent pictures of his genitals to Grace. On July 15th, he released his first studio recorded song, Roaring Thunder. Funded by Bob, Daniel had the opportunity to go to a recording studio and produce the now infamous piece. He went to the hospital on the same day for an altercation with Jonas, his caretaker at the time. On July 29th, Daniel released a video in which he claims the world would be better without police, citing the death of George Floyd as a reason. Daniel makes it clear that he has a dislike towards law enforcement in this video. Daniel's twisted sexual fantasies would only become more prominent on July 30th. In the disgusting video he posted, he is seen shirtless, stroking his chest. Daniel moans into the camera for Grace Vanderwall and Darcy Lynn. This video only cements the allegations further. On August 14th, he uploaded a three minute long video that shows an incident where Daniel screams and cries at Jonas. Daniel is hysterical in the video, laying on the floor, claiming that Jonas tried to assault him. Jonas appears calm in the video, and he seems to have a great deal of patience while dealing with Daniel. He tells Jonas that he will attack him for self-defense, never following through with this. This meltdown shows us a glimpse of Daniel's home life, in which he seems very combative and believes any and all physical contact of any manner is assault. For anyone wondering, here is a video of the meltdown. Can you hear me? No! What? Get off me! Get off me! If you try to hit me one more time, bitch! I have it all on recording! You tried to hit me! I'm on the floor! I'm doing nothing to you! I'm doing nothing to you! You tried to hit me! Wow. I just did self-defense! I'm on the floor! I didn't do anything! I just did self-defense! I even have a, I even have it on film! With you trying to... Like, I don't even know anymore! And I'm afraid of you! Like, I didn't do anything to you! You just tried to grab me! Like, why did you raise your fist? I was just trying to get outside. Like, why did you try to grab me? Why did you try to hit me? Call Ian. Tell Ian to call me. Tell Ian to call me. <laughs> well, why did you try to grab me? <laughs> why did you try to grab me? <laughs> why did you try to grab me? Stop! Stop! Stop coming near me! At this point, if you grab me, if you do anything to me, because I'm doing nothing, all I'm doing is sitting here, I will attack you for self-defense. Because that's legal. <laughs> like, I'm doing nothing to you. <laughs> Can you call Ian? <laughs> Call Ian! Later that day, Daniel performed his first concert at what appears to be some kind of cafe or restaurant. A few people are present, but other than that, it's empty. On August 18th, Daniel got his infamous mohawk haircut. Two days later, his California arc would begin. 
During this time, Samantha would become his manager, but more on her later. Daniel took the train and got off in Emeryville, California, where fans claimed to have spotted him. Daniel created a new TikTok account called Daniel Larson in SoCal and posted a video on it. He tells his audience that he is in Los Angeles and homeless, but neither of these were true. He was using homelessness as an excuse to get donations and uh, get attention, and he wasn't in LA as many community members would come to find out. Brother Daniel was in Northern California, more specifically in the city of Oakland. Many Larsonians would also claim that they saw him having a meltdown while walking around. Likely, Daniel was manipulated by trolls or management to go to California for some reason. The account that Daniel created that day was banned the same day it was made. The videos on it were mostly Daniel walking around Oakland, posting videos of his food, and a bunch of other things. As for his getting back to Denver, his new manager Samantha would convince his caretakers to transport him home, thus ending the first California arc. Samantha, also known as Sabbath STD88, is a controversial figure in the Daniel Larson community. She is notable for getting Daniel into contact with Jared, another one of Daniel's managers and trolls. Before being associated with Daniel, she would make videos about political topics and other controversial ideals. She then switched over to the content revolving around Daniel and would give updates. One especially controversial incident was in October, while Daniel was on a stint in the mental hospital. A call between Daniel and Samantha had fans concerned that she was attempting to manipulate him or take advantage of him in some way, which had the community worried about him. Many Larsonians discussed their desire for them to cease contact, not wanting Daniel to get any worse. Samantha's intentions were seemingly from a good place at first, buying him clothes and other necessities. She then realized that Daniel was beyond helping. This is when she began to troll and harass Daniel and make him say unsatisfactory things. Interestingly enough, this is not the first time that Samantha has taken advantage of other mentally handicapped people to sell her soaps. World of T-Shirts, also known as Joshua Block, was one of Samantha's victims that she used to promote her soap shop, STD Soaps. Samantha was fired in December after she confronted Daniel for his predatory behavior. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Larson. I love STD Soaps, and the reason why is that makes me feel like a real man. It makes me strong. The soaps, I love the texture. They really soothe me, keep me nice and clean, and it really makes me a stronger man. You should go, you guys should go check out STD soaps and go buy your own soap because it will make you strong and sexy as well, like me. So, if you want STD soaps, go buy it. Thank you. And go check out your wild side. Back to the main story, after Daniel got back to Colorado, the Daniel Larson Times account, ran by Samantha, would be created. This account posted updates on Daniel. On August 30th, Samantha and Jared hosted a Zoom meeting with fans that was locked behind a paywall. This meeting was mostly a Q&A and ended with participants playing a Kahoot relating to Daniel. The October 4th incident, also known as the October 4th intoxication event, was an incident in which Daniel uploaded a series of videos to TikTok in which he was noticeably drunk. His eyes are bloodshot and he is showing signs of erratic behavior. In one clip, he says that he is gay. In another, he says that this is all an act and says that he loves acting. Daniel acts truly unhinged in these videos, at one point saying that he believed the world is coming to an end. Eerily, he finishes off this video with a whispery goodbye. Hello everyone. Did you know that I'm gay? <clears throat> Did you know that this is all acting? I love acting. Acting, 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 acting. Please don't feel uncomfortable, everyone. <laughs> I am totally fine. Hee 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 hee. Where am I? I think this world is coming to an end. Goodbye. The rest of October is relatively uneventful, with Daniel apparently emailing the official Grace Vanderwall website. 
he got a reply from a troll pretending to be her that she wanted to start dating him. November marked the start of Daniel's apparent beef with Jojo Suwa as well. For unknown reasons, on November 6th, Daniel uploaded a bunch of videos in which he defamed or threatened her. Daniel appeared to be reading something in these videos, so likely a troll or management forced him to say these things. In one video, Daniel says that Jojo needs to stay in her own lane and calls her a whore. In another video, Daniel says that Jojo better be good at running and claims that something big is about to happen, ominously cutting the video there. On the 17th, Daniel hosts a live stream in which he says that he wishes Jojo died in the Holocaust. He also says the N-word in this same stream. This is a message for Jojo Siwa. You better be good at running. Something big is about to happen. Hmm? Jojo Siwa should have died in the Holocaust. That would have been breaking history. On November 29th, Daniel has a live stream in which Fake Grace broke up with him. Daniel gets spam called and texted as his number was leaked. The live ends with a mini meltdown in which he calls Grace a fucking bitch and a liar and tells her that she should go to fucking hell. If I'm gonna be treated like this, why do I even bother? Call from plus one five. You are a fucking bitch, Grace. You are a fucking liar. Incoming you are a call. fucking liar and you should go to fucking hell. You don't, you're not here. You don't know how hot my phone is, so stop lying. Incoming voice call from plus one three oh two two eight nine six six two. I'm just tired. I'm done. My phone is blowing up. I am now getting so many messages. I can't see the fucking screen, and I'm still being called a fucking liar. Six. Fuck you. Fuck you, spammer. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna have to get off the media before I make another fucking hole in the wall. December is also relatively uneventful with the only significant incidents being Daniel posting a video that had a predatory nature and Samantha getting fired. This wraps up his 2021 era. Things just get more interesting from here. January of 2022 marked a change in management for Daniel. His new manager, Bianca, would get into contact with him in an effort to help him by buying him necessities and promoting his music. She suggested that Daniel start a cameo and make some money of his own. She also seemed to be in contact with important people in Daniel's life, such as Bob, Andrew, and others. She tried her best to help Daniel, but would eventually quit after his abuse became too much for her to handle. Daniel's first homeless arc began in April of 2022, after he voluntarily left Jonas's care. He slept outside and posted TikToks regularly. In order to post said TikToks, however, Daniel needed to charge his phone. He would usually do this in public places that had outlets, such as restaurants and libraries. However, on May 13th, Daniel decided to charge his phone on private property. Not some abandoned house that somehow still had electricity, not a place he was allowed to be, but some random guy's front porch. Thinking that no one was home, Daniel plopped down and plugged in his phone. This would be a mistake as soon enough the homeowner showed up. Understandably, this man wasn't happy at all. The video that Daniel recorded starts off with the homeowner calling 911. He signals for Daniel to leave, which never happened. He keeps hinting for Daniel to leave. Daniel finally speaks when asked if he's going to wait for the cops to arrive, which results in him saying he doesn't know what the homeowner is going to do to him. This makes the owner angry enough to get in Daniel's face. Things only escalate from there, with Daniel making remarks that do nothing but make the homeowner even angrier. A significant part of this interaction is when the homeowner says, They're coming for you, you stupid fuck! Don't you understand? Daniel starts to utter something and is cut off with, Why are you fucking here? Daniel finally gets his word in saying, 
If you put one hand on me, which was cut short by get the fuck out of here as the homeowner reaches for Daniel, he retorts with the n-word. He was told never to come back as he finally walked off and did the video. I would say that personally, Daniel was very lucky that the homeowner didn't get physical or even pull a weapon on him. Things could have ended very poorly for Daniel, and we wouldn't have any more to this story if that was the case. Here is a video of the incident. Yes, I have a trespasser in my sitting on my patio in the front of my house. My uh, address is. I'd like this person removed. Get the fuck out! I'm telling you. Did you fucking hear what I said? Get the fuck out of here! I have a trespasser sitting on my porch who doesn't want to leave. No. I don't know. I, that's what I said. Yeah, wearing like a jogging outfit, red stripe, black pants with a red stripe, sweatshirt with a backpack, looks like a homeless person needs to get off my property. I don't know. If they do, they better show it right now. My name is Okay. If I ever see you on this fucking property again, there's gonna be consequences. Do you understand me? You don't come over here charging your fucking phone and using my fucking electricity. Who the fuck are you? I suggest you get the fuck out of here because they're on their fucking way. Are you gonna wait? Is that what you're waiting for? I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't know if I'm you're gonna- I'm asking you a fucking question! You better get the fuck off of here! Get the fuck out of here before I fucking move you out of here! If you take one step closer- Get the fuck off my property! If you take one step get closer- Get the fuck off my property! If you take one step closer- Get the fuck off my fucking property! They're coming for you, you stupid fuck! Don't you understand? If you- Why are you fucking here? If you put one hand on me... Get the fuck out of here! Okay, now... Really? It's gonna be like that? You're, you're threatening me, and I don't... I don't, I don't I'm going I don't, to get the fuck I don't off know, my property! I don't know if you're going to put hands on me or... you fucking call me a n If you're gonna put hands on me... You better get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. They're coming for you, bud! Whatever the fuck you are, get the fuck out of here. Why are you here? You think you can just come on, on somebody's fucking property, use their shit and get the fuck out? Who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out of here. No, because I, I'm afraid what to- What do you mean no? I'm afraid, I'm afraid you if you- better start walking. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to start walking. What the fuck is your fucking problem? If you're gonna put hands on get me- Get your fucking ass out of here. Don't fucking come here. Don't you fucking show your face around here again. 
What the fuck are you gonna do? You want me to fuck you up? Is that what you want? Get the fuck out of here and don't fucking come back. Don't do it, bud. Don't do it. If you're gonna put hands on me- Get the fuck out of here! Later that month, on the 15th, Daniel ran in the Denver Colfax Marathon. The reason for his competing in this marathon is completely unknown. He finished second to last. Daniel's constant walking around all day as a result of being homeless may have helped condition him to successfully run a marathon. You got it! You are going to be a finisher! Here we go! You did it! Way to go! A case manager is a person who coordinates healthcare and watches over a person to give them appropriate treatment. Daniel has had many case managers, but the most significant one and the one he's had the most conflict with is a man known as Andrew. Daniel posted many videos of himself having meltdowns because of what Andrew supposedly did. Like this, Andrew? This is what Bob and I do every single time you don't listen to us. Even he's to a point to where he's... Like that, Andrew? Like that? <laughs> what do you say now, fucking Andrew, that you fucking destroyed my life? <laughs> I want to fucking kill myself now because of this guy. Fuck you, Andrew! Fuck you! Maybe you should have just fucking listened to me, bitch. You're taking this way too far. Months on end. Months on fucking end and you've destroyed my entire fucking family. <laughs> You have destroyed us financially. You can't even afford the fucking court stuff just for your fucking... Oh my god. And Bob is demanding money. Bob is demanding everything. Oh my god. I don't even know what to think. Bob's mental health is dropping, my mental health is dropping, my mother's mental health is dropping, my dad's mental health is dropping. What the fuck is going on? Why the fuck am I to blame? I've done nothing wrong. I'm just doing what Andrew tells me until I hit my fucking breaking point because I can't put up with this guy. He's telling me, he's telling me to not go to court. <laughs> He's telling me to just wait things off and do everything with the team. But the team won't even fucking work together. My entire family is going bankrupt because of that bitch ass motherfucking hoe. I'm gonna end up like Bob and beat my head until I fucking bleed. Because he gets away with it. An interesting observation about this video is that Daniel claims that Bob hits himself and he has mentioned this multiple times so it is a pretty safe bet that Daniel probably learned this behavior from Bob. On June 24th, Daniel attended a Roe v. Wade protest where he would speak at the open mic. While he had the mic, he told his life story. He talked about Grace in the May 6th incident, among other things. He mentions to the audience that he is disabled and has autism, infamously uttering the following quote, So, because of my autism, my grandmother passed away of cancer in 2000, I want to say 19. Daniel started to talk about his adult entertainment career, but had the mic taken from him as he began to speak about the matter. 
The fact that he had to mention that it was quote unquote regular adult porn is very concerning. Here is the video. Radio, I'm a music artist. I just started my career like about a year ago. Um, but I have a very, very crazy story, um, very traumatizing story. Um, I'm also on YouTube. I mean, search my name up, you could find me. Um, when I was 18, so I have autism, um, a very minor case of autism. I'm very well spoken. Um, but I never used to be able to come out to crowds like this and be able to talk like this and be, be myself. Um, so I'm actually out here right now because I'm in a current lawsuit, court case, um, because my life is at risk. Um, and I'm gonna explain why that happened. I'm gonna explain exactly why that happened. So, um, because of my autism, um, my grandmother passed away of cancer in 2000, I wanna say 19. Um, and I wanted to be a singer. I was always performing when I was younger, not at a professional level. I've always wanted to also run for politics and become president of the United States. So, um, I'm 23 years old. Um, this is only the beginning of my career. Um, but I'm going to say about five minutes, maybe less. I'm hoping it's less. But this is a very, very serious situation. Because of my autism, I live in a disability housing service in the state of Colorado. And I um, went on to social media about three years ago said I wanted to become a singer. That's all I said. I made it public. I started doing about three or four covers and it took social media by storm. And I wanna say within six months, I was gaining per week 20 million views on social media per week. And now here I am three years later at 600 million views and a lawsuit that could put my life at risk. So I came out here because I want this heard. When I was in disability services and I was trying to get myself heard on social media, I had somebody that claimed to be a record label reach out to me. And they gave me a contract and it said Sony Music. And I'm gonna be serious, it was a real contract. The issue is I didn't know that they got it straight off of online. Like you could just go online and look up Sony Music contracts and find something. What ended up happening is they wanted me to go on to TikTok Live. I went on to TikTok Live, started my platform. That was around the time when I was gaining about 20 million views per week. During this entire time, when I was getting the 20 million views per week. That so-called management, which I later found out was fake, they ended up getting me to go onto TikTok Live and go completely nude online. And at the time, there was 3,000 people, 3,000 people in that live. And it went worldwide viral worldwide viral and it kind of ruined my career because at the time I was really inspired by a singer named Grace Vanderwall and um, at the time I was around 18 years old um, and I wanted to collaborate musically um, of course I don't know if that's in my future anymore um, I'm fighting for a chance now um, but basically the reason on why I went nude on social media, and I'm gonna to try to make this as short as possible, is um, I, was, I was told by this fake management that I was to go nude. It was like an audition for a porn, like a regular adult porn 
uh, suit that was going to help my career blow up. They said it would give me tons of views and it would help me out. On June 25th, an incident occurred that added more fuel to Daniel's delusions of being a celebrity. He approached a large crowd of people and pushed through it to get to the other side. While making his way through the mob, a few people recognized him. Daniel's delusions made him believe that the crowd of people were all there for him. For his side of the story, told in a separate TikTok video, Daniel would blame Andrew for his lack of security, saying that this was his real life and that Andrew didn't believe him. To finish off the video, Daniel says that he will never be off the media and says that everyone was taking photos and videos of him because of how popular he is. If his delusions of fame weren't bad already, this incident made it a hundred times worse. Here is Daniel's side of the story, as told by, well, Daniel himself. Okay, so I want to make this clear. That last video of me getting mobbed, corralled, fans putting hands on me, cornered up against the fence, and that video I just took. That's literally my real life, and Andrew does not believe it. And that's why I have the charges on me that I currently have, is because he doesn't believe, and I don't have security. I don't have protection for that. And that's why I say that if Andrew wants me off the media, it's not, gonna, it's not going to happen. I'm too popular because every single one of those people had cameras and were taking videos. So to conclude, here are some of my unscripted thoughts about Daniel's just, just his overall decay and the way that he seems to be deteriorating in the 2021 to 2022 era, especially around his first homeless art. Well, we can tell that Daniel doesn't really have a grasp on personal property and people's personal space, as you can tell from the uh, phone charging incident. And the fact that it seems like there's a little bit of entitlement here too, because Daniel, he believes that it's his right to sit on that porch and charge his phone. I mean, the way he was talking to that homeowner, you can't tell me that that wasn't just straight entitlement. To elaborate further on a remark that Daniel made about Bob hitting himself, you do have to wonder if, for whatever reason, Bob hitting himself had an impact on Daniel so much so to where Daniel tried to replicate the behavior and now it's just a part of his daily behavior patterns. Now for the mob incident, I would say that Daniel, this, this was a case of Daniel being in the wrong place at the wrong time and this fueled his delusions. Because he already thinks he's famous and that he's destined to be with Grace Vanderwall. Now, while he was out there, people, this whole mob and people obviously trying to get pictures with him, his uh, delusions would be fueled by that. And he would believe that these people are all here to meet him. That's why there's so many people there, is because they knew he was going to be there at that time. Now, at the end, Daniel says that there was paparazzi there, and they were all there trying to photograph him, which, in his mind, his mind could have twisted the story to make it seem as if they were all there for him, like they were all paparazzi. And I don't blame Andrew for not believing him about that, because, like I said, that was, that was him being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, I appreciate y'all watching this video. Um, I really hope you guys have a great day or night. Please like this video, and uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and leave a comment down below on your thoughts about the video. All is much appreciated. I really enjoy making these, like, seeing my channel grow as much as it has in the past little bit, I mean, it's just, it's brought a smile to my face, and all of you guys are just amazing, and I, I, I couldn't ask for a better fan base and audience. Thank you guys so much for everything, man. I mean, like, I really, I really appreciate it. Like, I appreciate you guys liking my videos, subscribing, watching them. And if you really, if you made it this far, like, you've watched the whole video, that's just a big W moment. Like, you are, you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. And with that, peace.